Welcome to Red, White, and Blue. From the right, a happy Gary Pollan. And from the left, an even happier David Jones. I'll tell you why. <laughs> Tonight, we welcome the Democratic Chair of Harris County, Gerald Bernberg, who led a Democratic virtual sweep in 2008, and his counterpart, Republican Chair Jared Woodfeld. This year, the, the uh, leader of the sweep for Republicans. So I guess you both had sweeps, just different years. <laughs> <laughs> so here's what I observed. You know, y'all can, I, I know you're going to talk about numbers, but, you know, I hate that, so I'll just try to steer you in other directions. Here's what I observed about what happened. Mindless voting for judges once again has deprived us of good people in judicial office. In 2008, Jerry led that, and now you led this in 2010. It doesn't help anything. Two, I think Bill White is really running for the Senate, always has been, always will be. And third, Rick Perry, who didn't want to campaign about Texas issues, as we now know, is running for president of the United States with his book tours and his... Today's show appearance is already booked. That's well, what I learned from 2010. Well, some very astute observations. Well, let's talk about the first one that, that you addressed, which really is the heart of it, and it's straight ticket voting. And if you looked at Harris County from the Republican perspective, this was historic. I and mean, we had more straight ticket votes than we've ever had in our history. Typically, they outvote us on the straight ticket side. This cycle, we outdid them by about the tune of 50,000 votes, and it had an impact. It had a huge impact. The reality is, David and Gary, when you look at you know 70 plus judicial candidates, folks don't have a time to educate themselves on every R, every D, who's running for judge. So what do they do? They go look at the party platforms, and there are very clear differences with respect to party platforms, differences we tried to point out by highlighting individuals that were elected in the 2008 Democrat uh, Obama landslide, uh, specifically Kevin Fine. We think that helped. Mm. Yeah, well, first of all... I had three you, observations. Yeah. He's just destroyed one. <laughs> well, Not right. bad, no, David. As you know, well, right after the, we prevailed in 2008, I wrote an op-ed piece that was published in the Chronicle in which I called for the elimination of uh, judicial elections uh, in counties as large as Harris County. Uh, when you use the phrase uh, mindless uh, election I, uh, for judicial office, I think the word mindless is redundant there. I do not believe that in a uh, county as large as Harris it is, it is possible for the electorate to become sufficiently knowledgeable about each and every one of the judges in 65 or 70 races uh, to exercise meaningfully a vote. Now, uh, the, the result of all of that is that, I mean, we have what we have and we have to deal with what we have. And we're going to continue to get these these, these otherwise uh, uh, unexplainable uh, shifts from election to election as long as we continue to elect judges. Uh, and that's my take on and that. And in Dallas, well. they elected all Democrats again. What happened, yeah, in, what happened in Dallas well, that well, didn't happen at, here? Look at it. I mean, Dallas is the, a lot different than Harris County. The Republican growth primarily is occurring in surrounding counties. We're be Tarrant, Collin, uh, and those now neighboring counties. In Harris County, we still have a lot of Republican growth occurring on the southeast side where we were successful in picking up a county commissioner seat with north side and the northwest side. So the demographics in Harris County are completely different than Dallas. Dallas is, a, is clearly more heavily weighted D, and we were very tight and very close up in Dallas and did well in some state rep races. Yeah, and by the way, when, when uh, uh, Jared talks about the percentage, uh, I mean the raw numbers of uh, uh, straight party uh, votes, the truth of the matter is that there were more Republican votes, period. In terms of the percentages, 72% of the votes for Democrats were straight party votes. Only 60% of the votes for Republicans Republicans were straight party votes. So, you know, you can look at these figures and say, what do they mean? What do they mean? I think what they mean is that we ought to find some different ways for selecting members of the judiciary. Well, interesting, because in a number of states, you can't vote straight party. Number yeah. one. A second observation on the judicial ballot there's a tradition in Texas of voting for judges. Of course, you go back in history, how many judges did each county have? One. It wasn't very difficult to figure it out. So I think Jerry makes a good point. We don't know who we're voting for. One of the things I've argued for is the state ought to pass higher standards for the judiciary, not just be able to practice law for five years and be able to run. That's how you end up with some of the people that you put on your ballot. And, and quite frankly, in the past, we've had some people that weren't quite qualified well, either to run, in fact, as opposed to what state law requires. But I wanted to shift over to... How exasperating to come on your show and have to agree with you. That's <laughs> scary. Well, it? at least you two agree on that. Uh, but let's talk about the independence, because I think that's the yep. most significant thing I see in this election. It was a, it was a great victory that Jared led in Harris County for the Republicans, a super victory in Texas. We picked up 22 House seats. Basically, my opinion is the Democratic Party in Texas has been set back a decade by this election. You believe that, but, uh, Mr. Uh, Bernberg? But I want to talk oh, about the independence. You don't want him to... Not yet. Oh, I see. But the independents <laughs> are the key. I think uh, new surveys are out saying... Pew did a survey. 37% of the voters are independents. And that's probably true. So what happened in 2008 in Texas was Barack Obama 
got the independents. He brought them to the Democratic primary, first of all, and then in the general election, he got those he didn't get, and they turned out and voted for him, and then they voted for the rest of the Democrats because they were responsive to his message of hope and change. That, that's true. Two years later, they decided they didn't, they didn't like what they heard now because they didn't do what he said he would do. Whether that's fair or not, we're going to not debate that today, but now the independents have shifted, and they shifted this time to the Republicans. That's why the victory was so significant here. I mean, the independents decided they'd had enough, and now they're going to vote Republican. Well, so why guess, did they vote for Bill White, those independents? They, they did. did. That's the they point. They some did. Bill White carried Harris County. <laughs> Don't forget that. Bill White uh, right. not only carried Harris County, but, but uh, uh, Rick Perry underperformed the average judicial candidate in Harris County by 50,000 votes. Uh, now, what that means is there must have been an awful lot of folks who came, Republicans who came and voted for Bill White and then voted uh, down ballot for uh, Republicans. What happened, well, 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 the problem mm. that Bill White had was he needed to win by a lot larger margins Correct. in Harris County. He barely won in Harris County, and we saw what happened to straight ticket. But the really, the independents were key, absolutely. They gave you the victory in 2008 and, and helped to give us the victory in 2010. But the bigger number for me was the level of voter intensity. You had an extremely high level of intensity amongst your ranks going into 2008. People didn't know what hope and change is. Now they know what it is and, and folks came to our side. And the level of intensity going in to the 2010 election was higher than I've ever seen. And that results in victories. Grassroots volunteers who say, I want to get out there and vote and I want to take 20 of my friends with me. Voter intensity was the key to this election for us in 08 and in 10 and it was the key for them in 2010. But, but, what, about, but what about Jerry's point, Jared, that uh, uh, what happened here? Bill White won the county. Mm -hmm. So if you follow what happened in 2008, Barack Obama won the county, probably by a similar margin, why didn't the Democrats win down ballot? What well, happened? well, I think I think you hit the nail on the head, the the independents. But the independents didn't just go for us. They they understood the process of deselecting, it appears to me. Because if you looked at the numbers that Governor Perry had versus Bill White and compare that to the straight ticket vote in our favor, I mean, obviously they're mixed. And so what does that tell me? That tells me that individuals uh, may have gone and, and supported Bill White through the deselection process, yet at the same time voted straight ticket R. So that's a very educated electorate when it comes to the voting process. So this is, getting a, little, this is getting a little uh, exotic <laughs> here. But interesting. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. I'm sure you're thrilled with it here. Um, we, we still have this underperformance of the former mayor of Houston in his home mm -hmm. county. He needed to do a whole lot better. And my question to you both is, since I know where he was spending his time reading his Facebook page all the time, in Midland, in Amarillo, in Lubbock, in College Station, East Wichita Texas. Falls, all over the place, and here's where the votes are. And so um, I'm saying to you, he gave up on Harris County and you lost as a result. No, as a matter of fact, uh, that first off, uh, I, think, I think that Bill White was correct in calculating. Uh, it's a big state. He was already known in Harris County, sufficiently enough to carry Harris County, not as much as we would have liked or he would have liked, but there weren't another 300,000 votes for him in Harris County, no matter what he did and where he, he did. He needed to get out and get known in the rest of the state, and that's what he concentrated on doing. Now, I believe that the strategic decision that was made by the White campaign was that in order to win, what they had to do was to capture a base of about 42 or 44 percent of the Democrats who they thought were there no matter what. I think that was a miscalculation, but I think that was it. Then, there are other six or seven percent would come from the K. Bailey Hutchison voters, and so therefore they would go out and try to appeal to the K. Bailey Hutchison voters and put those together and, with the well, base. Yeah, they, uh, they couldn't. They couldn't get Gary. Start, that, you're a Hutchison yeah, voter. Yeah, let, you me, let me talk to you real quickly didn't, about one thing work. you said. Bill White was known but he was not defined. And it was very just a surface knowledge that was very Bill White friendly. We then had an opportunity to spend the past six months to a year defining who the Bill White was, talking about some of his votes, talking about him going to Austin, his lobbyists, fighting us on real property tax relief, educating folks on Houston being a sanctuary city, talking about the budget shortfalls in the, in the city of Houston. We educated folks on who the real Bill White was, and that hurt his numbers. And, his after, the, mm -hmm. and after that, he still carried Harris County, and he, and he significantly uh, beat... Perry in Harris right, County. Let's talk about, let's talk about no, no, local, barely, local barely. races. Down, let's talk about the down ballot races. A number of interesting races. We had the propositions. Proposition one, uh, the uh, drainage and uh, uh, infrastructure fee that passes narrowly. The red light cameras gets beat. Uh, explanations. What happened? Well, I, I, you know, obviously these are votes that are occurring within the city. The demographics in the city and the voting patterns in the city are very different than they are in the county. Uh, the party was against Proposition 1. Proposition 2, which failed, we didn't take a stance on, but Proposition 3, we were against. Uh, it failed. And, and so I think what you had was uh, uh, give the 
give credit to the Prop 1 folks. They were able to talk to the people about why it was important to make these changes. We didn't think it was the right time to do it, especially given the fact that we had a 40% increase in sewage and water rates recently. Yeah. And, and so we came out against it aggressively, as we uh, did Prop 3. Uh, 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 the Harris County Democratic Party did not take a position on any of them. But if you want to know my, my personal view, I just think that people cared more about getting streets and, and, and flooding under control uh, than paying more traffic fines for running red do you lights. Think, do you think that if the red light cameras had really focused on what it really is about, which is revenue that goes to the police department, that it would have passed? Uh, perhaps. I also think that, that uh, as your friend uh, Paul Betancourt points out, the, uh, the, the cutting down the length of time that the yellow light stayed on in order to increase the revenue, I think, was very hurtful to the prospects of that uh, proposition. By the way, I don't, think, uh, I don't think Paul and Gary are friends anymore because yeah. no, no, he no, was against Prop friends. 1 and Gary sure. was... Well, oh, well, well okay. but in but Prop we'll, 3, we'll, I'll give the kudos to a single okay. transgression. And, 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 yeah. and one of the big <laughs> issues on Prop 3 was people looked at it as just that, just an opportunity for the city to take in more revenue. There was not one study that said that these red lights would actually make those intersections safer. And I think the, the anti-Prop 3 folks were very good about edging folks educating folks on what red light cameras really I think that's at. a good point. And when you get to these propositions, I mean, I know when I, when I talked to anyone with these propositions, I said, number one, you got to educate the voters on what you're trying mm -hmm. to do. And I think Prop 1, at the end of the day, did a better job educating than, than the people Prop 3 did. Okay, so here's two things that might happen, and you can tell me whether you agree with me, and that is that the new Republican, increasingly Republican majority in the House of Representatives is going to kick the Speaker of the House from San Antonio, Republican oh. uh, Mr. Strauss, mm -hmm. Kick him out of office, number one, and uh, nominate someone else to be speaker. Uh, secondly, we are a state that is broke, and the Republicans are going to have to find some revenue in order to balance the budget. Can you, well, answer, ask you want him to talk about the next speaker? He never or me? Does that. He never does. <laughs> That's well, my prediction. Well, let me let me address the speaker issue since we do have a, a majority of 99 Republicans in the state house now. Um, the State Republican Executive Committee recently passed a resolution said we need to choose the speaker from our caucus, and I think that's wisdom. When you've got 99 Republicans in the State mm -hmm. House, the Republicans need to come together amongst themselves and choose who the next speaker should be and vote in, in, in a block. There's no reason in the world that a Democrat minority should be choosing who the next speaker is in the State House. And so right now it's a very, uh, a very aggressive, let's say, a spirited fight between a couple of individuals. I think ultimately uh, it's too early to tell who's going to win. But we do know that Speaker Stroud was very involved in a lot of the races down here, specifically helping get Republicans elected to take seats back and to maintain uh, state reps who were in very challenging races. Uh, speaking of, of local races, uh, Jerry, Ellen Cohen, uh, yeah. her, her defeat. Uh, yeah, I would I say. I think that was, uh, you, you yeah. were shocked. I was absolutely shocked and very That wasn't even on the list of uh, endangered uh, Democrats. The first I heard of that was maybe the night before the election when I was uh, asked the question. In fact, I think I was asked the question because... Uh, no, you hadn't even predicted that one was in trouble. No, I, no, I thought you, we were going to win that you, one. Oh, yeah. did uh -huh. you? Yeah. No, I didn't see that one. Speaking of all. mindlessness, again, we had a campaign the, for governor. We had a campaign for county judge where, as I said in the earlier question with you, uh, Jared, we have a state that is busted, $25 billion in the hole. That is the not county, true. The county is going to run out of the reserve funds by March. And so the question is, who's interested in governing now? You know, you guys well, have proven well, that but, you can win but, elections. But here's the issue. Who's going to govern? Well, sure. Well, but let don't me, let him get away it's with not, saying it's not we're in the hole. Or whatever number, we're no. not in the hall. You're just saying if, if trends continue, we'll have a shortfall of money for the next biennium. They just have to make but, tough but decisions. But, David, the bigger, and that's a great, great, great point. The bigger question is what do you do with respect to the tough decisions that you're going to have to make? 2003, Rick Perry had those same tough decisions when he was dealing with a multi-billion dollar and budget. And so he cut children's so, health no, insurance you, and so he cut but education. But did he increase taxes? No. And that's what the people were society. We knew that we would be dealing with a budget shortfall in the next session. How do you deal with it? Do you cut taxes? Do you tighten up your belt like most of the country is doing right now and cut spending? Uh, or do you go and you increase taxes? Clearly the people have said we don't want you to increase taxes. We want you to tighten up your belt like we're having. Yeah, to. you want to be Texas or California, Jerry? Come on. I'd rather be Texas, but I also don't know that, that <laughs> my belt will tighten that much. <laughs> I, mean, I, well, want to be, I want to be California. Do way. we have, a, a, and, and talk about the way the revenue and, and works for well, the state. Well, we got Jerry Brown as governor there. <laughs> <so> <laughs> Oh, scary thought. Wow. Do we have a dysfunctional uh, <laughs> system of taxation for the state that really doesn't make much sense for the 21st century? Well, of course, when all you talk about right. is cutting, uh, you know, I'll spending. I'll answer yes. for the Republicans. Any system of taxation is dysfunctional. Isn't that yeah. your position? Well, uh, yeah, I, I, absolutely. I think one thing we don't need is an income tax in the state of Texas. One of the things, that, uh, reasons we've done a lot better than other states during these challenging economic times is because we don't have an income tax. 
And so obviously I, I'm not a fan of the business tax that was passed a few sessions ago, and so I'm hopeful that our legislator will deal with that. Uh, but ultimately we do have a much better system uh, than most states, specifically California. We have children to educate. We've got sick people to take care of and provide health care to. We've got uh, uh, other uh, children who need uh, uh, college educations that are being t totally priced out of the market. Those things aren't free. We also and y'all can sit here and say, oh, it's really easy. You just make tough decisions. Well, tough decisions have significant consequences. And I don't think it's just a matter of making tough decisions. I, I think it's, it's a whole lot more complicated and difficult than that. So what, what tough decisions are going to be made at Congress when we have a new leadership coming into the House of Representatives. Mm -hmm. Joe Barton, uh, you know, he's the he's the congressman from BP, will be head of the Energy Committee. Uh, not necessarily. Uh, uh, we have uh, Kevin Brady. There's three candidates yeah. for that, Dave. Kevin, Kevin Brady Dave, uh, is right. uh, head of the <laughs> Economics Committee, I uh, believe it is. And then we have Ralph Hall, 87-year-old Ralph Hall, who's head of the Science Committee. So well, what can we hope to get out of this group? I'll tell you from a Republican's perspective, now that we have the majority, is there are a couple of things they're going to have to stand up to. They're going to have to stand up to President Obama and his big government solutions for this country. The first thing they're going to have to do is, is essentially vote to repeal health care. And obviously Obama is going to veto that. And so the Wait next, a minute. It's going to pass step, the Senate. The, what do you mean he's going to have to veto? Next step, How does he have to no, veto a people, bill that doesn't pass the Senate? Because people see really? the writing on the wall and I think it ultimately <laughs> will pass the Senate. But let's say they aren't able to do that. They're going to have to defund it. They're going to have to defund it. And really the people said to Republicans, look, we're going to give you a chance. We're going to give you a chance to go up there and stand up against these big government solutions that we're coming, that we see coming out of D.C. And so you better stand and fight for our values and belief. And so if these votes are not cast, if they do not stand strong, we will not maintain the majority. So, I they're, so they're, they're, That's the Republic, they're the Republicans saying we want to get rid of this $1.3 trillion uh, the reduction of the national uh, deficit, which of course is what health care would do. It will reduce the national mm -hmm. debt. That we want to get rid of uh, children being able to stay on their parents' uh, health insurance until they're 26. We want to get rid of uh, the elimination of the donut hole and make uh, senior citizens pay more money for their prescription drugs. We want to get rid of the lifetime uh, maximums for, for uh, 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 that the insurance companies can be required to pay. We want to get rid of all that stuff and cost the taxpayers more money. That's well, the Republican plan if what you say is they're going to have to stand tough first and all, pass that out of the House where it's not going to pass the, in the Senate well, so the President will be forced to veto the it. The Republican plan is we want government out of our boardrooms, our showrooms, our classrooms. We are and how about our bedrooms, by the way? Our life. How well, about our bedrooms? I, I, That's okay with me. Yeah, in your bedroom. Bedroom. Not in my bedroom. Damon's but, bedroom, it's okay. <laughs> what's going what's gonna, what's gonna to happen, happen with the Republican and Party? hospital rooms? If, Mr. Bernberg, you may be able to say what's going to happen in the Republican Party if they continue this attack on Hispanic office holders and on attack well, an attack on Hispanic voters. Wait, 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 come on, there's no you know, attack what? on Hispanic well, you, uh, office holders. You voted, you voted Sylvia Garcia. Yeah, but we well, voted. Well, that because she's a liberal Democrat who locked <laughs> arms with Barack Obama and he walked her right to defeat. David, That's why David, Sylvia David lost. Did, you didn't look at the returns. We elected two Hispanic Republican congressmen in Texas. We elected Hispanic state oh, reps. Oh, by defeating Republic, I mean, Democrats, uh, Hispanic That's fine. Democrats. But then you can't make it. David wants to make this we're anti-Hispanic. The truth is, and we elected a Hispanic governor in New Mexico. Oh, that's right. Hispanic senator in Florida, Marco so Rubio. That mean, well, so what's happening okay. is the Hispanic vote is going to end up coming Republican where it normally should be. So that means there will be no Arizona-like <laughs> law that will come no. out of the, uh, the legislature well, well, this well, time? Well, first of all, I don't think we need to be voting based on race. We don't need to be voting because you're African American, Hispanic, or not, or, or, or Asian. We need to be voting based on principles. And those person, those people that hold those principles that are most dear to us as Republicans, those are the folks that we should support. Those are the folks I'm sure that Jerry's people. But my support. question, well, my question to you was: Do you want race to? Race shouldn't matter. I know, but do you want to arrest people based on race, which I is what Arizona? I want to secure our border. Well, I want our federal government to do the job they're supposed to be doing right now. And because they're not doing what they're Just supposed so long to be. We don't have to pay for it, by the way. Well, we got to cut money. Or is that where we're I don't want our state gonna... government paying for it, that's okay. for sure. But look, the government needs to, the, the federal government needs to do three things to do it well. They need to deliver our mail on time, they need to secure our borders, and they need to maintain a standing army. They're not doing well with the first two. That is the Rand Paul. Two. That's the Rand Paul theory of what the government is all about. Well, we are, he won, too. Yeah, we are We are getting uh, they, old. I thought that was his father's plan. Uh, well, so, so this, what are, what are the... What are the firsts that we see coming up in the Congress of the United States, perhaps? The first what is going to happen after January? And they'll pass a budget that hadn't been what? done yet, David, for 18 and months. That'd the, be good. And what will be the tax rate for the top income earners in the United extended. States. Well, it's yeah, going to be extended. Gonna, I, I All the tax cuts right. are going to be extended at least extend, a year. They've got to extend the Bush tax cuts. And there's going to be some kind of, uh, of a compromise to extend for some period of time, some portion. First of all, 
98% of the tax cuts are going to be made permanent, I believe. Uh, now, maybe the trade-off is, no, we won't give the middle class their tax cut unless you give the, the ultra-wealthy their tax cut. And so the only way that we're going to go along with the middle, tax, uh, middle class tax cut, the Republicans might say, is if you'll agree to give an equivalent tax cut to everybody. Um, I suspect that they'll find something to say, well, okay, we'll extend the tax cuts, but only for people making less than a million dollars. Anybody making more than a million dollars, you go back to the Clinton yeah. era tax cuts. Something like that, and then everybody, uh, you know, it says sings kumbaya and, and, and uh, look how agree. well Congress can get and along. And you probably agree with me on this. There will be another battle over Obamacare, and I think that's going to happen sooner instead of later. And so, I think but the only way to really, really get rid of it, it'll be a funding. It'll be a funding. That, ultimately, that's where the battleground will be. Yeah. The only way to get rid of it is to replace the president. So let's talk about where the Democrats go from here, Jerry. I mean, this has been a devastating okay. defeat. Worse than defeat that uh, Bill Clinton suffered in 1994, Bill Clinton landed on his feet. Um, Bill Clinton uh, ends up now being, of course, revered former president of the country. I mean, he, but he, he really turned it around. He compromised. He worked with Republicans. He smacked them when it was appropriate. He worked with them when it was appropriate. Gets reelected overwhelmingly. Well, so, after 94, what do the Democrats about, have to after do? After 94, of course, you had uh, Republican House and Senate. Now you've at least got a Democratic Senate. That's, that may be uh, bad there. for the Democrats. It's actually. possible that it, it's possible that it is. Uh, we'll, we'll have I mean, better off if Harry Reid lost and you got a new leader. To be uh, honest. Well, it's you know I'm not going to go That's there one way or the other. I don't think it would be better off to have uh, Sharon Angle as uh, in the mem as a no, member of the really. United States Senate for the next six years. So I cannot agree with that. Yeah, uh, the, the, the Tea Party but, took some hits in the Senate races. That's and sure. caused some hits to the Republicans. Obviously, I think you had a shot at, at taking control of the Senate, but for uh, the uh, you know. Alaska, Colorado, Nevada, and, and you just uh, can't embrace, uh, you you just can't embrace yeah. witchcraft and expect right. the people that are going to vote right. with you. That's so, right. but where do the Democrats? Do? I want an answer. Where do you go from here? I, I mean, does Obama the, decide the heck with it? Uh, you know, I won two years ago may, my way or the highway. This may surprise you, but the White House hadn't called me yet and asked me for my uh, well, advice. Maybe I they believe. should. Well, that, uh, all right. Maybe uh, he watches our show. Or are you going to recommend? Are you going to recommend capitulation? Capitulation by the president of to the course, Republican agenda? Of course not. <laughs> well, of course not. No, uh, and nor is the president going there anyway. Uh, the president is going to, in my judgment, continue what has perhaps been a mistaken. Uh, strategy up to this point in time, and that is he's really going to continue to try to work with the Republicans to come up with something. But I think it's going to be I think it's going to be well, on different issues. I think they're going to retread uh, the ground on energy and come up with something that everybody says, see, we, we took a step forward on renewable well, energy, no cap and trade, but what, we well, did something there. I think there's going to be something that will come up on, on education that's going to Quite anger the teachers, but but is going to be something that's going to be palpable well, to uh, palatable to both sides. And and by the way, foreign policy, particularly the war in Iran. I mean, in Afghanistan, I think that's likely to be an area which we can. Look he almost said war in Iran, yeah. and I'm sure I did, Gary I did almost did almost say that. Well, I, I, well, I would were, say I that did. is the big bomb opportunity. I, I mean, uh, that was going to be the October surprise. Obama bombs the nuclear reactors he and called you and yeah. call me in, in, you know, uh, in Iran. Right, right, but, right. but his press conference it. just after the defeat made it very clear that he is going to do anything but take the Bill Clinton approach uh, post-1994. He said, what did he say? He made it very clear. He said, look, we haven't done things fast enough. You know, what he appears to be saying is I'm going to accelerate all these bad things that I've done over the past two years and he clearly didn't hear the voice of the people in, in New Jersey and Virginia and Massachusetts or just a few days ago uh, all across the country. How about in Illinois? Yeah, Illinois. His old sentence. That should speak volumes. Bill Clinton had 4% yeah. unemployment at the time that he was making his uh, mm -hmm. calculations mm -hmm. about what, how to behave. He also had a, a very, very small <laughs> debt compared to what we have now and he didn't have nine, or rather 14 million unemployed. And he didn't pass uh, Hillary Care. And so he didn't have, have to deal with trying uh, to Hillary maintain Care on steroids now. So, so uh, if if uh, if my, my question is, does Barack Obama have to now govern like Roosevelt? In other words, calling out his enemies and saying. I well, welcome you. Unlike you, David, I wasn't around during Roosevelt's <laughs> race. <laughs> uh, but you no, get my obviously, point. Yeah, no, obviously he is going to have to, to, to uh, decide that he's either going to do something similar to what uh, Clinton did uh, in the, the post-shutdown uh, contest and uh, in confrontation with Newt Gingrich and say, I'm going to go to the American public and say these obstructionists are shutting down the government uh, and I'm doing these reasonable things uh, for you. Or he's going to have to find accommodations. And I'm not hearing, and I don't mean this pejoratively, I'm not hearing any willingness to compromise or work together by the newly elected uh, Republican. I, I think that, that Obama could take 
any, President Obama could take almost any Republican proposition that's been out there this cycle and say, okay, here's my suggestion, here's what we should do, and the Republicans would unanimously well, say, no way, Jose. I would hope that Republicans would not compromise on those core convictions and values that they were elected on recently. I mean, the public spoke, and they spoke overwhelmingly, and they said no to President Obama's agenda. So I'm hopeful, I am begging them, I'm praying that they will not go up to Congress and compromise and water down all the strong, solid positions that they had on the campaign trail. That is the quickest way for our party to get back to the minority. The best way for us to continue nope. to grow this majority is to stay true to those principles and values that we campaigned upon and that gave us victory and just it, a few days and ago. It, and it sounds, like prayer, it sounds like prayer is coming back into the national agenda. For yes, pray. 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 Thank you both Amen. for being here. <laughs> Thank you all for joining us tonight. Uh, you can also watch this show again if you go to HoustonPBS.org, click on the local program bar, choose red, white, and blue at that site. Watch this show again if you choose to, along <laughs> with our follow-up discussion. Until next time, get informed and get active. <laughs>